remnants of the yellow tape along Washington Boulevard in Morrill Park, an all too familiar sight to residents. Just over the last couple of years, there's been yellow tape everywhere in the neighborhood. I mean, you come out the door and there's just yellow tape where it's just crime scene. So far this year, there have been six shootings along a two block stretch of this street. I never seen so many people with firearms. You know, when you talk to people in communities which are so burdened with gun violence, they just want it to stop. Right. How does it stop? Well, unfortunately, I don't think it just stops. Um, there's just got to be a lot of hard work, sustained, consistent hard work by a lot of people over the, over the course of a, a good period of time. U.S. Attorney Eric Barron, in an interview, told us part of that work must include both enforcement and intervention at the community level. It is a new focus of the federal government. The public is not always accepting of this idea that you have to do more than just lock people up. Right. Some, some of them aren't. I think, by and large, people get it. But if you think about it, it kind of makes sense. You can lock up as many people as you want, but they're coming out soon. And they're coming out every day. So we need to be a part of supporting them and helping be, be successful in the communities they're coming back to. So part of the work in the U.S. Attorney's Office now includes not just prosecution of violent offenders, but also job fairs like this one to help steer people returning from prison to work and other services. Barron is also a proponent of using hospital-based intervention programs. A big example here in this state, we have a world-class hospital system. You know, are we going to use it just to, to, you know, save people from... Uh, you know, shootings, which is extremely important, are we going to, or are we going to also use that as an opportunity for intervention? The office is adding federal prosecutors to focus on violent crime. Barron has a chart behind his desk showing the number of homicides in the city and statewide. Efforts to curb gun violence come amid a surge in gun sales. The number of people in Maryland cleared to purchase guns has doubled in the last three years. In 2019, 60,978 people were approved, 120,509 were approved in 2021. An additional flow of guns comes to Maryland from surrounding states that have fewer restrictions. Some end up used in crimes. Is it unhelpful that there are disparate laws around the country about how many guns you can buy at one time? What's the you know, level of the background check? Well, I can't really get into, you know, policy discussion, but, um, you know, the, the, the volume of, of firearms and the ease with which those who shouldn't have them can get them is certainly not helpful. Another source of guns used in crimes, guns that are stolen. Here in Morrill Park, there was a homicide in 2020. The gun linked to the crime had been stolen from a house in Baltimore County 14 years earlier in 2006. Guns have a lengthy shelf life. I'm Jane Miller, WBAL-TV 11 News.